Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to do another vlog of my night shift. I'm on my third night shift of three, so tiredness is catching up with me. If you follow me on Instagram over at Dr. Sarah Nichols, then you might have seen the other day that my friends and I did a huge clothes swap, and this outfit is entirely from my friend Katie. So, thanks Katie. I can't believe tonight's my last night shift of F2. It's actually kind of crazy. Let me know in the comments down below if you are one of those original subscribers who has been with me since that, uh, that vlog that I did of my first shift as a doctor. I think I vlogged the whole week then. You have seen me transition all the way from being a medical student through to where I am now, which is where I, I'm at the end of F2, and that means I could actually start my specialty training right now and work my way up towards being a consultant, which is insane. I realize that you guys are really keen on me doing more vlogs so I am going to try and uh, and make it more of a regular thing. So the last two shifts that I've done, the last, last two night shifts, last night and the night before, haven't actually been that busy and that's quite strange for me because I am used to having very busy on-call shifts as you guys have seen if you've watched my uh, my other on-call vlogs. It's been quite disconcerting actually and weirdly when you're not getting bleeped all the time and you're not run ragged off your feet then you kind of start to think is something wrong have I missed something so I actually went round all of the wards that I was covering last night and went to all the nurses and checked that everything was okay bleeped myself to check that my pager was working I, f I had this horrible feeling that I was just like missing something but all was well so cannot complain and hopefully we'll have another night like that tonight I find my sleep to be really variable when I do nights. I got about six and a half hours sleep during the day today, which isn't brilliant, but it's also not terrible, and I know that I'll be able to get through the night with it. I'm just making my way to handover. Handover is a meeting between the on-call day team and the night team that are taking over and it's basically a chance for us to be told about any of the patients that are particularly unwell or any patients that are due to come in or any scans or bloods that need chasing overnight. This is the neurosurgery doctor's office where I'll spend most of the night tonight. This is where I set myself up in the corner on the computer. Uh, the office is a bit of a mess, but I always give it a bit of a clean and then um, start my work. So our handover meeting runs from about 8pm 8, 8 till about half past 8 and then immediately after that meeting, my registrar, who's the person more senior than me, through the night shift has gone immediately to emergency theatre and I am left to review some of the scans and blood results from the daytime. Then one of the nurses comes into the office and tells me that there is a new emergency admission on the ward so it's my job to clerk that patient. I ask the patient I ask the nurse how the patient is clinically and then get to work getting everything ready for them. So all new patients need bloods and a cannula and I also need to write a drug chart for them and to make sure that we have all of their medications prescribed and I have a look at their previous medical records from the hospital on the system having a look at any old letters or discharge summaries and we also have access to a system where we can see their previous medications and prescribe those so I get to work on that. The patient that I'm clerking in has had a bleed on the brain called a subarachnoid hemorrhage and this patient is actually fairly stable so it's not too much of a rushing emergency and he doesn't have to go to theatre overnight. Whilst I'm clerking this patient I get a few other bleeps about things like prescribing medications and doing a post-operative review on someone who's not doing so well after theatre. We also have an elective admission so someone who's coming in for a planned operation and it's my job to see them as well. Midnight. I've just finished seeing the elective patient that's come in and the registrar is down in theatre with the emergency admission so I'm going to go and join him in theatre now. I don't know if it might actually be a bit too late and he's probably actually already finished the case but I'm going to go anyway because it's a good learning opportunity and I won't get much chance to go back into theatre after this job. It's my last surgical job. So the other emergency that came in was a subdural hematoma, someone who fell and hit his head and needed to go immediately to the theatre. I didn't actually have time to even clerk this patient in, he just got taken straight to theatre on arrival. So this will be the first time that I see this patient. Yeah, 
yeah, so I got into theatre just as my registrar was closing up the head and doing all the last stitches. So I actually ended up missing most of the operation. But I think we've got another admission coming in and I'm going to go up to the ward and start getting ready for that. And I know that the nurses have got a few jobs that they'd like me to do as well. So I'm going to go crack on. I'm getting really hungry now as well. So I'm just going to have my break. Well, I'm going to sit and have some food while I do my paperwork. When you're really, really busy at work, it can be so easy to forget to eat and drink and look after yourself just because you're rushing around doing everything for other people and sometimes you need to actually remember to put yourself first. So I always bring a thermos of coffee with me. Tonight I've got iced coffee because it's so hot in the hospital and I've got some pesto pasta here. If you want to see the recipe, have a look at the highlights on my Instagram page. I'm told at this point that one of the patient's cannula has fallen out and she is someone who desperately needs this cannula for IV antibiotics. So I attempted three times to put one in. I couldn't get it in and she told me that the last time she was cannulated it was by a consultant anaesthetist under ultrasound guidance. So I've called the anaesthetist for backup, which they weren't that happy about, but I really needed some help in this situation, so I made the call. After this, I'm told about a patient who's showing meningitis symptoms. So I call my registrar and we go and see the patient together. He asks me to order a CT head. Oh, hi there. My name's Sarah Nichols. I'm one of the F2s in neurosurgery. Um, I'm just ringing regarding um, who I've just booked a CT head for. That's right. She's GCS 15 and feeling generally unwell in her lumbar spine. This is by far my favourite part of the shift when I look out the window and realise that the sun's risen. It's six in the morning now and at this time I try and get the list sorted for the day team. I'm going to go and get myself changed back into my normal clothes. And with it being Monday morning today, we will be updating the all of the rest of the staff on what's happened over the weekend because on the weekends we have minimum staffing in um, so everyone's coming back to work on Monday and they'll all want an update of all the new patients all the emergencies that have happened over the weekend and anyone that's become particularly unwell time to get changed out of scrubs and back into my normal clothes I'm not actually feeling too tired at the moment but um, I am looking forward to getting home and sleeping and having a couple of days off. I always find that the last few hours of your night shift just fly by because you're just prepping everything for the day team coming in and kind of making sure that everything's stable with your patients, making sure you've chased all of your scans and all of the bloods and that everything's up to date and ready. Most of being a doctor is just being organized and making sure that you're on top of things. So after I've got the list ready and got everything ready for the morning meeting, I always have a little freshen up at the end of the shift with some deodorants and mouthwash, a bit of lip balm and a spritz of my perfume just in this atomizer that I got from Amazon. It always just makes me feel a bit more human at the end of the shift. So a lot of you have commented that my videos make the hospital seem really quiet because I always film when there's no one around. I just wanted to show you this is what it actually is like normally. Um, so yeah, you've come with me all the way to the end of my shift. If you've managed to watch all of this far, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. So that is it. It's half past eight in the morning. I'm back in my car and I am ready to drive myself home and get into bed. That was actually a really good shift. Um, it was quite a steady stream of work through the whole shift. There wasn't anything outrageously busy. I didn't feel overwhelmed at any point. I didn't really get a proper break. I mean, I sat in the doctor's office and ate my food and watched a video, um, but I didn't actually leave and get away from the wards and have like a proper, proper break. But I think that if I had prioritized and worked a bit more efficiently, I probably could have done, but I wasn't really that bothered but I always make sure that I get lots of food and drink on a shift. You've probably seen, if you've watched my other vlogs, that I obsess over bringing lots of food and snacks with me to every shift and trying to make sure that those food and snacks are quite nutritionally balanced because it just makes me feel good, keeps my energy levels stable. I don't know why, but in the NHS, there's this kind of weird badge of honour that people seem to love to say or oh, I haven't had a drink in this many hours or I haven't even had a chance to go to the toilet for this many hours but actually I think it's really important to prioritise yourself making sure you stay hydrated making sure you've eaten plenty and that you're eating good food um, because 
at the end of the day, we are looking after people and we are in charge of making sure that people are well. If you aren't actually well hydrated and you're not keeping yourself in peak condition, then you can't really expect yourself to be able to look after other people to your best ability. So if you're going to go and start work as a doctor or a nurse or any other job that works these kind of long shifts and it's quite busy work then please just make sure you take time to eat and drink and go to the toilet because it's a basic human necessity and no job is too busy to be able to do these things. Best part of my shift was a patient who had been down in theatre, the one that I turned up to at the end of surgery. I went to go and review him post-op um, and before he'd gone into theatre, because of the bleed on his brain he was slipping into a coma. Um, after they evacuated the clot and got the blood off of his brain, I went to go and review him in the post-op unit and he was he was quite sleepy but he was laughing and joking with the nurses and that's just such a lovely thing to see when you see people getting better. So that was the best bit of my shift. Worst bit of my shift, oh another best bit of my shift was, uh, okay this sounds really silly but there's no better feeling in the world than getting a cannula into someone when they tell you that they're a really difficult person to cannulate um yeah one of the new admissions she had tiny veins and she she had bruises all up and down her arms um from the last admission she'd been in hospital a couple of days ago for another problem um and she said oh no one can ever get a cannula in me or you'll have a really tough time getting one in um everyone always takes several attempts to get a cannula in me well don't want to brag but i got one in first time um and I don't know why it's so satisfying to get a cannula in, but it is. Um, so there's that. But then on the flip side, worst bit of my shift was that there was another patient who needed a cannula. And again, she was someone who was really difficult to cannulate. I went to go and put one in, put it in, got it in the vein. I know I got it in the vein because there's some blood started coming back. It just didn't work. I couldn't get it in. I tried again and I couldn't get it in. And then she said to me, oh yeah, no, no one can ever cannulate me. The last cannula I had had to be done by the consultant anaesthetist and they used the ultrasound machine. They never ever get one in me without an ultrasound. So I was like, great, I'm going to have to call the anaesthetist. So yeah, I called up the anaesthetist and he wasn't very happy about it. He was, uh, I'd say, I'd say less than civil. I think that they are very busy and they have a lot more urgent and more sophisticated things to be doing than coming to a ward and popping a cannula in someone who's relatively well. So I did feel bad about asking them but he came and sorted it out for me so I'm very grateful for that no matter if he was a little bit grumpy. But yeah that's another thing in medicine when when people are um, sometimes a bit grumpy about stuff like that you've just got to remember that it's not personal. Um, and I think that when I started work as a doctor, that was the kind of thing that I would have probably taken home with me and thought, oh God, maybe I made the wrong call. Maybe I shouldn't have asked for him. Um, but actually, you've just got to do what is right by the patient. I'm thinking of doing an ultrasound course next year so that I can put cannulas into people with an ultrasound machine and find their veins that way. Because I think that would be a really useful skill to have. I always loved it in A&E when people couldn't get the cannulas in and they got the ultrasound machine out, whipped one in. And I, I've been thinking that actually I'd like to be that person. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get myself skilled up. I think you could say right now that I am wittering on. So I am going to go home, get myself into bed and get some sleep. And then apparently the next couple of days is meant to be a bit of a heat wave and I am off work and I don't have any plans for once in my life. So I think I'm actually going to get a chance to sit in the garden and chill. So guys, thank you so much once again for coming along with me for a day in the life or a night in the life um, and joining me on my shift. It's always fun to have you and I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, then give it a thumbs up and if you've watched all the way to this part of the video, then thank you for sticking with me. You guys have been sending me the sweetest messages on here and on Instagram and I really appreciate that. I try and make sure that I get back to everyone. I do read them all. Sometimes some slip through the net so I'm sorry if I haven't replied to your comment but I really do appreciate all of your support so thank you. Thank you for watching and for commenting. Hit that likes button and leave me a comment down below if you've enjoyed this video. So this week's shout out 
is going to War Pigeon. I got a comment from you on my last video and you said that you're going to start Gem in September. So that's super exciting. I hope you have a wonderful time. And if you guys want to join the shout out crew, then leave me a comment down in the description box below and maybe it'll be you next week. Have a great day, guys, whatever you're up to, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.